Hey guys, in today's PFSense video, we'll be talking about creating and configuring VLANs. This is part of my PFSense series and assumes you have watched the initial video where I built and installed the firewall router appliance. First, we need to answer the question, what is a VLAN? Well, a VLAN or a virtual network is simply taking your physical network infrastructure, whether that be the router, the switches, the cabling, and segmenting it out into multiple logical networks. It's often done for security purposes. So, you know, maybe you have a, a server that's processing confidential data and you want to keep that traffic separated from your user traffic, your end workstations where people are opening emails and doing day-to-day -day tasks like that. It will also have performance benefits as well, especially if you have hundreds or thousands of clients on your network. All right, so let's jump right into the creation process here. The first step is to go to interfaces and assignments then the VLAN sub tab. So you can see the VLANs I've created already here. We're going to click the add button in the lower right hand corner. The parent interface is the interface you want the VLAN to act on. We're going to use the local area network, the LAN, which is assigned to interface IX1. Uh, VLAN tag, I'm just going to use 25. And we're just going to call this YouTube. This is just a test network and click save. Uh, so now you see we have a new VLAN listed here, description YouTube with tag 25. So the next step is to go to the Interfaces Assignments tab. Let me see if I can make this smaller so you can see the entire screen here. Uh, so now we have our new VLAN here listed under Available Networks and all we need to do is click Add and then click Save. Uh, by default, it gave this interface a name of Opt4, so we're going to click on that. And by default, the interfaces will not be enabled, so we just need to check this box here. Going to give it a new name, we'll just call it YouTube again. Uh, for the IPv4 configuration, I want a static address. For the IP address, we'll do 192.168.25.1. And for the subnet mask, this is going to be a slash 24 network. And that means we have the range of 25.1 all the way up to 25.255. Uh, and this uh, 25.1 address will end up being our router or gateway address. And that's all we need here. So we'll click save and apply changes. Uh, so now we should be able to ping that address here, 192.168.25.1, and we see it is responding, so we're good there. Um, next, we need to enable DHCP on this new network so that once we plug in devices, they'll be assigned an IP address, um, and that's done under Services and DHCP Server. And we'll click the YouTube tab here, which is the name of the new network we created. Uh, check Enable DHCP on the YouTube interface. So down here we see our available range is dot one through dot 254. Uh, typically when I set up my DHCP ranges, I use one through nine. I reserve those for any network related equipment such as switches, uh, routers, things of that nature. And then I'll use the range of dot 10 through dot 99 as the DHCP range. And that leaves dot 100 and up for static assignments. Uh, so for the range, I'll enter 192.168.25.10 through 192.168.25.99. And that is all we need to do here. We'll scroll all the way down and click the save button. And also worth noting, there is a section down at the bottom here where you can set up static mappings. Uh, so if you don't wanna set up static IPs on your device, you can put in the MAC address here. And this will ensure that DHCP always assigns the same IP address to that device when it connects. That way you don't have to worry about maintaining static IP addresses on a number of devices across your network. So the next step is to get this new VLAN over to our network switch. And to do this, you need to make sure your switch supports VLANing or 802.1Q. And I'll be using an HPE 2920 for this demonstration. Now when I installed my new router, I used port number one on the switch as the uplink from the switch back to the LAN interface on the router. So first we'll need to go into configure mode and I'll need to create the new VLAN. So this is VLAN 25, name YouTube. So we'll do a show VLAN. Okay, and now you see we have our new VLAN 25. So next we need to make sure that frames for this VLAN are tagged on the uplink port that goes back to our router. So like I said, that is port number one. So we're on VLAN 25, we'll do tagged one. Uh, so if I do show VLAN ports one detail, you can see all of the VLANs I've created except for the native VLAN are tagged on that uplink port one, including our new VLAN 25 of YouTube. And then to test this, I'll be plugging a laptop in and I'll use port number 33 for that. So we'll also do untagged 33. So, so if I do show VLAN ports 33 detail, you can see we have VLAN 25 YouTube as the untagged VLAN for that port. When we're done, we'll save our changes here, right memory. And now we can go plug in our laptop and test it out. All right, so we'll plug in our network cable here and let's make sure we have an IP address assigned, IP config. 
Uh, you can see we're assigned an address of 192.168.25.10, so, uh, so it did grab the first address in our DHCP range. Uh, so now we can do a ping of 192.168.25.1. And you see we cannot ping our gateway. And if we try to ping something outside the network, such as Google, uh, you can see we are not getting a response either. And that's because we need to take an additional step of allowing traffic through the firewall. Before we take a look at the firewall rules, we need to talk about one additional change you may need to make. Now, this won't be required for most people who are building their own router appliance or purchased a higher end NetGate device. Uh, however, if you have one of the NetGate devices like this small one you see here, this is the NetGate SG1100. You'll see this device actually has three network ports here. Uh, so this device actually has a built-in four port switch that uses VLANs itself. So if you're using a device like this that has a built-in switch, you'll need to make sure that the appropriate interfaces are tagged with the appropriate tags for this to work correctly. Now I used the SG1100 initially in my network and it is a great device. Um, however, many of the tutorials I watched online did not include this step and it took me a little while to figure it out. So I'm hoping that by including this, it might help out somebody else who has a similar type device. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the computer that we're using currently into this device so I can show you that additional step before we proceed on to the firewall rolls. All right, so we're now looking at the interface for the SG1100 NetGate device. So the additional step you'll need is if you go to interfaces, you'll see there is an option here that says switches. If you do not have the NetGate device with a built-in switch, you will not see this option. So we'll click switches and you see it says it's a Marvel 6000 series switch. Go to VLANs and you can see the four ports on this built-in switch. We have ports zero through three. Uh, so port zero is the LAN uplink that goes from the built-in switch to the NetGate device itself. Uh, port 1 is going to our OPT network, port 2 goes to our LAN network, and port 3 goes to our WAN network. And you'll see the interfaces 1, 2, and 3 all have an upper range VLAN tag because this switch uses VLAN tagging to keep these networks separate. So you'll most likely be using the LAN port. So we need to have our VLAN tagged on the LAN port and tagged on the LAN uplink port. So if we go to the VLANs tab here, you can see the multiple VLANs I've used in the past. We have home, cameras, and guests. So we need to add tag to add our new VLAN. VLAN tag is 25. We need this tagged on port zero, which is our LAN uplink port. So zero and then tagged. And then we need to add a second tag of port two for our LAN interface and tagged. And we'll give this a description of YouTube for our VLAN, click save. And now you see we have our new VLAN here of YouTube, port zero tagged, port two tagged. So it's essentially double tagged. And if this isn't confusing when it comes to VLANs on this particular device, I don't know what will, but, but if you don't have this particular NetGate device with a built-in switch, you don't need to worry anything about what I just said in the past couple of minutes. So now we're plugged back into our original network. So let's make sure we have a new IP address assigned, IP config. So I have IP address 10.10, .10, that's good. Uh, so to discuss the firewall rules, we'll go to firewall and then rules. And we'll click the YouTube tab here for the new network we've created. And as you can see, by default, there are no rules assigned to this interface. By default, there's an implied deny at the end of the firewall list. So because there are no rules here allowing traffic, all traffic has been denied or blocked from going through the firewall. So one thing to understand too, is that these rules are acting in terms of traffic inside the particular network exiting that network. So these rules are applying to traffic in the YouTube VLAN exiting the YouTube VLAN. They are not working in terms of traffic originating from other VLANs coming into the YouTube VLAN. So if I need to allow traffic to pass from the laptop connected to the YouTube VLAN out to the internet, I need to put that rule into the YouTube firewall section. If I need to allow traffic to pass from the internet into the laptop connected to the YouTube VLAN, that is opening a port or port forwarding, that particular rule would go in the WAN interface here on the left. So again, the firewall rules are applying to traffic inside the particular network exiting that network. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm simply going to add a rule to pass all traffic from the YouTube network outside. So we'll click the add button. Action is pass. Interface is YouTube. IPv4. Protocol, any protocol. Uh, so source, any, destination, any, doesn't matter to me. I just want all traffic to pass for the purposes of this demonstration. I'll click save. And you see we have our new rule here that says protocol IPv4, any source, any port, any destination, any port, any traffic, just allow it. And we'll click apply changes. So now we should have access to the internet on our laptop. Uh, so now if we come back to our laptop here and we do ping our gateway address, can see our gateways now responding. 
And we should also be able to ping Google as well. If we go back to Google, ping google.com. Google is responding as well. So we are good to go. So let's take a look at an example with more restrictive rules. So for example, I have a couple of IP cameras on my network as part of my security system. I constantly read about hacked cameras and just things that were open to the internet that shouldn't have been open to the internet. So I decided that I'm going to put my IP cameras on a separate VLAN with zero access to the internet and zero access to any other devices within my network. So you'll see here I have the cameras VLAN or the cameras firewall and there are only two rules allowing traffic in this interface. So I am allowing traffic from port 53 or DNS traffic from the IP cameras to the router itself. So cameras address is the address we assigned to the interface when we created our interface. That's not going to allow traffic to the outside. It's not going to allow traffic to other VLANs. It's only allowing traffic to the router itself or the interface itself. Additionally, I allow traffic on port 123 or NTP, that is your time sync protocol, also to the camera's address or the address of the router. I do run an NTP server on the PFSense itself, so that's just going to allow the cameras to synchronize their time. It helps with daylight savings time and any you know, time drift over a long period of time. And then like I said, there's an implied deny on any other traffic other than what's allowed here. So my security server, which is the NVR recording software, can make connections into this VLAN to access those cameras and pull those streams. Uh, so I think this is a great example of a lockdown VLAN a typical person may be wanting to set up. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about it for VLAN creation. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Uh, or if there's anything else you'd like to see within PFSense itself. Our next topic in a week or two will hopefully be touching on intrusion detection, which was the entire reason I wanted to build this new firewall. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.